comes to your mind whenever I mention the word alcoholism? Is it mimosas at brunch with the girls or maybe a cold beer watching Sunday night football? I bet for most of you, the word that doesn't come to mind is drug, but that's exactly what alcohol is. It's a drug. A drug that ends approximately 140,000 lives per year and ruins lives on a daily basis. It ruined my great grandfather's life. He was plagued by alcoholism. It ruined his relationships with his friends, his family, and even resulted in his marriage ending. And eventually, it ended his life. My name is Ellery Davis, and while I'm not here to convince you to stop drinking, I am here to convince you about the negative effects that alcohol has on the human body, the relationships around you, and how you can even recover from alcoholism. So, how does it affect you? Well, according to the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, alcoholism only not only affects your liver, it also affects your heart. It can cause high blood pressure, strokes, and even cardiomyopathy. Now, cardiomyopathy is the change in the shape of the muscles around your heart. This can cause an irregular heartbeat, trouble breathing, and even sudden death from heart failure. Another major factor that influences our body from drinking is cancer. According to Beverly Mertz, executive editor of Harvard Women's Health Watch, women who drink moderately, um, their risk for breast cancer increases by about 8%. So if you look at sl slide one of the PowerPoint, you can see a visual representation of each part of the body that is negatively affected by alcohol. Now, if you continue on to slide two, you will see the area of the brain that is affected by alcohol. This area is called the hippocampus. It is responsible for our memory ability and our, um, our reasoning skills. Uh, drinking causes the hippocampus to shrink, which can cause short and long-term memory loss, as well as trouble processing emotions. According to the British Medical Journal, people who consume four or more <coughs> drinks per day are six times more likely to have shrinkage in this area. These effects not only stem from long-term alcohol consumption, they also stem from short-term alcohol consumption on large amounts. So even if you think drinking on the weekends doesn't affect you, it still does just as much. So this leads us into our next topic, um, covering alcoholism and what constitutes being an alcoholic. So, since our brains are not fully developed until the age of 25, when people start drinking at younger ages, such as in their teenage years, they are more susceptible to damage in this area of the brain and more likely to de develop an alcohol use disorder later in life. So, according to the CDC's 2015 Youth Behavior Study, when high school students were asked if they drink in the last 33 days, 33% responded yes. That 33% is 3.5 times more likely to develop an alcohol use disorder later in their life. Now, an alcohol use disorder is not constituted by the amount of drinks that you have per day or even per week. It is constituted by the body's reliance on alcohol and your inability to stop drinking. Many factors go into your risk for having an alcohol use disorder, such as your family history of alcoholism. I, for example, am more susceptible to it because my family does have a history. Your mental health state, such as if you have anxiety and depression, you're more likely to be driven to drink. Or one major effect is social factors. In our society today, alcoholism is so widely accepted that even having a few drinks after work with your friends, or like I said, having a cold beer uh, watching football, is so accepted that people don't even realize how often we consume this drug. However, not all hope is lost. If you fall victim to an alcohol use disorder, there are many resources that you can use to recover. So according to Alcoholics Anonymous, um, <coughs> to expressing your problems to another will help you recover and not relapse back into alcoholism. Most people who are addicted to drugs cannot quit cold turkey, so there are many resources such as going to AA meetings or even going to a recovery facility that can help you take action on your recovery journey. To bring this to an end, today I hope you learned a little bit more about the negative effects that alcohol has on the human body, the relationships around us, and even how you can recover. I often wonder if my great-grandfather knew about all of these problems that alcohol can
can cause if you would have continued to force like weigh and drink it for that little feeling of feeling better for a little while. Thank you.